there and welcome to The Drum's 2021 predictions. I'm Rebecca Stewart, Trends Editor at The Drum. Now, over the past 12 months, media consumption habits haven't just surged, they've fundamentally shifted. Amid all of this, Connected TV, or CTV, has become one of the biggest opportunities in advertising today. Today, I'm joined by Double Verify and Channel 4 to discuss their predictions for the sector and how marketers can make the most out of CTV in 2021. Um, so welcome both, and I guess a good place to start is by getting you to do a quick introduction. Um, so Tanzel, maybe you could um, kick us off. Sure, uh, Tanzel Bakari, I'm the Managing Director for EMEA here at Double Verify. I'm glad to be okay. here. And Jonathan. Hi, I'm Jonathan Lewis, I'm Head of Digital and Partnership Innovation at Channel 4. Nice to be here too. Well, thank you both so much for joining us today um, and for being part of the John's 2021 predictions. Um, I guess the first question is around, you know, media consumption and how it's changed over the past 12 months. So we've just seen so many changes and we're probably going to continue to see um, some flux from consumers. But what are the biggest trends we're seeing in terms of um, how media habits have changed and in terms of the uptake and connected TV? as part of this from both a kind of consumer and advertiser perspective. Um, Tanzel, maybe you could start us off here. Sure. You know, I think, I think there's been a paramount shift in digital consumption. Uh, we, we're all spending time at home. You know, prior to starting in, in the early part of this conversation, we talked about sort of the, uh, the, the, the joys of homeschooling and, 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 and spending more time sat in this chair rather than uh, out and about. So, I mean, as that, as that sort of as our worlds have changed in this last uh, 12 months, uh, so has the way that we consume content. Uh, we ran a study here at Double Verify at the middle of last year, just at the end of the first lockdown. And I mean, even at that point, the average consumption uh, for consumers on digital content um, had, had more than doubled. You know, we were almost at seven hours of consumption of content across multiple devices. Um, and across the, 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 the respondents, I mean, we had over 10,000 respondents um, across, across many of the countries in around EMEA. 44% um, of those consumers are stating that they're using CTV devices more since the pandemic began in March than, than what they were doing in the past. Um, and it's been consistent. It's, it wasn't a spike. That's the, the I mean, it's, it's one of the biggest changes that we've seen in uh, in, in our industry in a long time, uh, driven by the pandemic. And so, I mean, I do think that a lot of those changes, a lot of those consumption habits are, are somewhat permanent, at least for the foreseeable future, um, and maybe even longer. Yeah, and some kind of really illuminating stats from, from um, Double Verify there too. Um, but Jonathan, from a kind of Channel 4 perspective, you know, home of Bake Off, what are you guys seeing in terms of change and how people are consuming your content um, digitally? Yeah, I mean, I think, I don't think it's any surprise if I tell you that, you know, Channel 4 has probably had one of its best years in the last seven or eight years in terms of total viewing. And that comes back to picking up what Tanzel was saying, you know, people haven't got much to do at the moment, particularly in this sort of lockdown, as I said, 2.0 or 3.0, whatever it is. Um, you know, viewing viewing growth continues to go on that sort of upward trajectory, both across um, linear and digital. I mean, we've had some just amazing performances over the back end of last year. I think Bake Off did, um, did Channel 4's biggest ever um, consolidated viewing uh, for the final, for um, for any show, that any, any commission show that we've had Add on the channel since since the channel began. I think we, we consolidated around 12 million uh, for Bake Off, which is phenomenal. But also we're seeing young audiences, um, dare I say it, come back to TV in a big way. Um, Gogglebox, again, delivered its biggest series ever in the autumn uh, with over a 50% um, viewing share for, for 16 to 34 adults. So we're seeing young audiences watch TV in, in spades and also it's, it's, it's expanding out onto, onto our digital platforms. We're also seeing huge growth on all four. I think we're just sort of, we're changing the dynamic and approach with, with our on-demand business. So there's very much a sort of digital first focus now, in Channel 4. We're thinking a lot about how we box set content and how we series stack um, rather than, rather than you know, showing, showing the show sequentially throughout you know um, a series of weeks 
uh, we're looking looking at um, how we how we manage that. So yeah, it says it's a, f- a phenomenal year, but we also pragmatic in the in the context of you know things will change. People will be allowed out of their homes soon, and w- and we also have to prepare ourselves for the fact that some normality will resume. But I think you know as a result of some of these changes, people have got a lot more familiar. When I talk talk about this with my Channel Four hat on, with what um, maybe all four has to offer from an on-demand experience perspective particularly for those younger audiences. And I think, you know, we're hoping that, you know, there'll be an element of stickiness that will sort of reside um, as we get into an element of normality over the course of the coming months. Yeah, definitely. Um, And like, you know, among all this, what you both just said, the appeal of CTV to advertisers is really clear. You know, audiences are growing, measurability is getting a bit better. Um, and you're just able to reach people that are, are locked down right now. Um, but what are some of the kind of permanent implications for marketers here? Because as always, a kind of opportunity comes with a challenge. So what are some of the kind of biggest questions you're both seeing from, from CMOs and advertisers around connected TV? What are the biggest challenges? Um, do you want to start, Tanzel? Sure. So, so I think, um, broadly speaking, the biggest challenge uh, that that we're we're trying to sort of resolve with with many of our clients uh, from a brand and, and, and marketer perspective is is ultimately a question of or well, two questions. One is transparency. Uh, you mean where am I advertising? Who am I advertising across? Um, and then the the second question is value, right? Am I am I spending money in an environment that's driving performance? Uh, am I wasting spend? targeting the wrong audiences? Am I, uh, you know, am I actually ending up where I wanted to, to, to deliver my ads, right? And, and I think one of the biggest challenges that we've seen um, over the, the last I mean, year, I would have thought, year, year and a half, is the significant increase in, in, in fraud um, that we've, uh, we've captured. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's both uh, an opportunity for brands, even in the CTV environment, but it's also a significant risk. And those concerns have translated from their experiences in, in, in the digital ecosystem. I mean, they've had those same experiences, those same concerns for many years. And as they move into an environment like CTV, where uh, the quality of content is very high, but then also the cost of that content is very high, the risk to those budgets is, is also very high. And I think that's the the one thing as an industry that we, we still really need to, 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 to challenge and to resolve um, as we go into the rest of this year and into next. Mm-hmm. And that kind of um, comes back to the measurement piece as well, doesn't it? Um, we're going to discuss fraud a bit later too, um, but all this um, kind of requires marketers to have a really stringent measurement framework in place. Um, and Jonathan, I know that was one of the channel, um, can challenges that you've seen at Channel 4. Um, is this idea of you know how to measure connected TV in line with linear? Can you maybe talk a bit about how that's a challenge? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, look, I, connected t- TV or televod as we call it is a, is a big proportion of our total viewing and our overall vod um, footprint. And but more importantly, um, clients and advertisers are, are migrating spend to vod um, in a much much quick, much quicker way over the course of the last, you know, two or three years, the, the proportion of money that's being spent um, on on Televod um, has, has grown exponentially. Um, but CTV as a as a proportion of of, of um, or big screen VOD as a proportion is is, is around about seventy five percent of our total um, VOD universe now, and, and that and that is that is grown by about ten or fifteen points since pre pre lockdown pre pre COVID. Um, and yeah, as you say, you know, the, the challenge we've got is that as more money's migrating to our digital platforms, the question comes up constantly now about how, how we can measure it and how we can ensure that, you know, the, the, the reach that, that we believe VOD delivers can be accountable and is consistent across the, 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 the broadcaster universe. And there's a, there's a number of um, different products in play. There's bar, Dovetail, there's the, there's the C-Flight product, which is being um, supported by Thinkbox. Um, we, need, we need one of these to come into play this year to, to, to support this, this sort of exponential spend that's going into, into the VOD platform that can deliver this kind of like deduplicated incremental reach that we know exists, but that can, 
give give um, our customers, our clients, the confidence that when they spend, you know, gets delivered on our platforms, you know, then that you know it's having the impact and effect that we, that we all believe it has. Yeah, and it's really interesting there that you mentioned reach, um, because that's so important, you know, when it comes to connected TV as well as bundling it all up with linear and tying it all together. Um, Tanzel, could you maybe talk us through why audience reach is so important and, you know, how marketers can be certain that they're actually reaching the right audiences on CTV? Absolutely. So, you know, I think just to, to follow on from John's point, you know, I think it's great that we're trying to find uh, in, in the broadcaster ecosystem a common sort of uh, structure that allows us to determine reach across those platforms. But if we see, you know, if we if we can learn anything from what's happening in the states in this environment, it's it's that the reach and the ability to extend audiences, uh, not just in the, the 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 main broadcaster ecosystem, but beyond, is is really where um, you know the industry is seeing the value uh, for CTV out in the states, right? And and I think if we look at it from our ecosystem here in the UK and in Europe. I mean, we're still we're still getting to terms with trying to understand how that uh, is going to be uh, applied. So, I mean, reach becomes extremely important, um, and scale uh, and, and targeting that reach um, in environments that are conducive with uh, brand and, and brands and their their sort of uh, brand uh, uh, suitability uh, profiles is going to be extremely important. The broadcasters are going to play a massive part in that. But the industry as a whole, uh, beyond just the broadcasters, is also equally as important in order to ensure that we're able to drive that reach and scale. Um, and I think that's the the, the key part of where um, where, where this industry uh, is going to need to resolve. You know, we we've seen if we look at the total TV households out there, uh, half of those now have some form of CTV uh, connected device. Mm -hmm. um, a third of the total TV households. Uh, even don't even subscribe to pay TV anymore. Uh, they're only, you know, they can only be reached by CTV or, or demand channels. Um, and, you know, I think when we look at the, the overall ecosystem, um, that, that sort of percentage of, of people actively, I mean, I think we've, we've heard terms like cord cutters or, uh, you know, cord nevers, but I mean, those people who are shifting to more digital ecosystems as a permanent, mechanism to engage and consume con content is only going to grow. You know, we're going to hit close to 50% in the next couple of years uh, based on a, a number of reports out there. So you know, if that is the case, then driving reach uh, and driving scale, not just in the broadcaster community, but beyond is going to be extremely important for brands and marketers. Uh, and having a common currency uh, to be able to determine uh, and measure uh, those audiences, their, the impact of those audiences, the performance of those audiences, and the risk of those audiences uh, across that broader CTV ecosystem is going to become even more imperative. Mm -hmm. And just so I'm kind of following up on that, like looking at the stats, you know, as you see, you know, CTV and video adoption, they're kind of full speed ahead. It's something like 40% of households will be cord cutters by 2023. Um, and then among all this yeah, worldwide ad spend on digital video is set to hit 61 billion this year alone. Um, and on CTV, that's going to grow 50% year on year and it should have hit 20 billion in 2020. Um, and you both um, kind of picked up on the need for more consistency and measurement there and making sure you're reaching the right audiences. And uh, one thing that emerged there was this need for like a common currency to, to measure that. How far do you think we're off that? You know, this is a predictions panel 2021. How far away are we from, you know, the industry joining together and having that common currency? Do you want me to go first? Yeah, go on. So, so I, think, I think there's two challenges. I, I think there's a broader ecosystem and, and, and do we have enough inventory? What type of inventory? Uh, and and, and how, how valuable that inventory is? I think there's that first issue. Um, the bigger issue that I think has, has sort of challenged us in the past has just been a technological issue, right? The ability for us to track uh, audiences and, and, and measure audiences, the, the ability for us to, uh, to measure the impact, the performance of those, uh, you know, the impressions across CTV 
just hasn't been there uh, without getting too far into a technical ecosystem. Um, you know, in digital, VPAID has uh, enabled us to measure and, and, and block and, and, and actually protect brands in a much more meaningful way. Uh, CTV runs through a vast ecosystem. And so the ability to do that technically just hasn't been there. Um, you know, we launched a product at the end of last year at Double Verify called Video Complete, which uh, enables brands uh, to, to filter impressions that have some element of risk uh, associated with them uh, as, as, as defined by their brand safety profile. So it may not be right for that advertiser, uh, but might be perfectly fine for another. That decision needs to be left to the advertiser. And so... You know, as, as, as more of these technologies uh, and, 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 and as the technology catches up with the problem, um, I think we, you know, we, we, we definitely solve uh, one of the major obstacles. Uh, the second obstacle, as I mentioned, is just this, this question of value and this question of sort of beyond the broadcasters, how, how much scale and reach can I actually have? And you know, does, does a, a whole sort of wholesale investment in CTV make sense? I absolutely think it does. And, and you mean, know, a lot of the broadcasters will lead the way in, in providing that assurance to brands but to drive that reach and scale in the same way digital has done for the last 10 or 15 years. Um, then, I mean, once that happens, CTV will, will, A, will be on the map and B, will be a significant part of uh, the majority of the large advertisers' media, media budgets and media plans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it might, might take a little while. Um, and Jonathan, from a kind of broadcast perspective, you mentioned a few... And projects that are up and running now and one from Thinkbox. How long do you think it'll take these kind of things to come to fruition? Yeah, I, I suppose just sort of picking, just quickly answering the first question, which is around the sort of, you know, bringing consistency to, to, to audiences and measurement. I think you said you to both of those. I think interestingly, actually, I think I, I, we're probably seeing, I wouldn't call the word, said word fragmented, but there's definitely going to be a, a, a a, more, a greater mixed economy of audiences available um, to buy against. We see the evolution of um, clients that have access to rich first party data being really, really important and the ability to match those, uh, those data sets against, against all four. So we launched a product called Brand Match um, beginning of last year that enables that, but enables that at speed. So, you know, able to match um, audience segments not on the fly, but you know, over, over within a sort of 12 to 24 hour time frame, where you can start buying against those um, audience segments that would exist in, in, as, as a match segment on all four, which we think is really exciting. So I think there's going to be a bit more fragmentation of of audience buying capability, and we're going to, and I think you're going to see broadcasters dialing up that capability because you know the, the, the brand match solution has been delivered by a company called Infosum, which. ITV are also working close to you. So I think you'll see us and ITV sort of moving in that trajectory. Um, in, ter in terms of um, you know, consolidating measurement, I'm pretty confident that we're going to have a, um, a measurement solution that sits across our linear and VOD platforms um, this year. I think it's, 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 been, um, it's been something that, that advertisers and clients have, have wanted for some time. We're now, as I mentioned earlier, it's getting to that point where you know, the scale, the scale point is coming into question, you know, the, the, the proportion of AV budgets that are going onto VOD, onto CTV are now becoming significant and we need the ability to measure that, that incremental reach that, that VOD is delivering against the campaign on a campaign by campaign basis and, and that's deduplicated. De um, so yeah, there's a number of options out there at the moment. I think, um, you know, we'll, we will see something this year would be, would be my, my prediction. Um, and I think it's most needed in the context of, as you point out, the, 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 the scale of growth of um, digital and of, of VOD and of CTV kind of needs, needs this. Yeah, it definitely is a big priority. Sorry, I'm sorry, on your board handle. Yeah, um, I think it's important that we, we sort of recognise this question of measurement. Um, and when CTV sits in the middle, two access points to that measurement, right? Um, you have linear TV moving into online digital, online VOD, uh, and CTV, right? So there's this, how do we connect the measurement in the linear ecosystem to the digital ecosystem? Um, which is what, what, what John is talking about. Um, 
there's also the opposite side, right? There's a lot of video content uh, that is available online, uh, that is available online and is now even being tra translated and is being viewed across the large screen. Um, and so you've got to be able to measure even somewhat evenly across those two ecosystems, um, both linear to, to, to online VOD and traditional digital video uh, inventory towards CTV. Um, yeah. There's the third area, I suppose, which is you mean made for digital content, right? The the the, the TVOs and the, the the sort of mm. Netflix of the world, right? So that those type of that type of content is also made available in these in these environments. So how do we how do we make sure that we have a when we talk about measurement, we have a holistic measurement mechanism uh, that allows for individual and uh, understanding the, the sort of unique reach and scale and and, and possibilities, irrespective of whether it's coming from linear content, it's coming from online digital content, or or made for digital content. Yeah, so there's a few kind of sides to the coin here, is what you're seeing um, when it comes to measurement. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and another thing I wanted to touch on um, that you both kind of mentioned briefly earlier um, is fraud. When we are writing about CTV and talking about it at the drum, this is an issue that comes up quite a lot, um, and it's something that marketers have questions around. Um, fraud is still quite prevalent on CTV, um, depending on the kind of medium. But um, Tanzel, maybe you could start by talking us through, you know, how marketers can protect themselves from fraudsters and ensure that the investments they're making in CTV are quality investments, because you've got quite illuminating stats um, on the fraud issue that you can share with us. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, as, as, as CTV grows and becomes a bigger concern for brands uh, and marketers and, 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 and consumers as a whole, um, I mean, we have, uh, I mean, it, it becomes the same issue as we've seen in, in previous industries. Um, as we see a larger demand uh, for content uh, and a larger demand on, from marketers and, and, and media spend, um, then you mean the, the fraudsters that we uh, we all sort of uh, love to hate uh, follow where the money goes, and, and we're seeing a significant shift of that money towards CTV. When we uh, you know we, we we regularly look at content and we regularly look at the sort of scale of fraud across our platforms. Um, you know, in early 2020, pre-COVID, um, we saw a you know, significant increase in, in, in fraudulent impressions, uh, you know, 161% year-on-year growth. And then as COVID continued to grow and, 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 and sort of the impact of COVID uh, on CTV specifically continued to grow, I mean, for 2020, it was a 225% year-on-year growth. Uh, in in actual fraudulent impressions or fraudulent incidents um, that we 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 captured, um, and these releases sort of uh, from fraudulent uh, from fraudsters are are, even, are are done in a number of ways. You know, one of the most common ways is you know, most of these fraudsters release apps that have for all intents and purposes legitimate content. Um, they gain approval from the app store and then they use that app in illegitimate ways. You know, they, they defraud advertisers out of their media spend because that content may be fine, but the environment in which it's running and the consumers that they, the advertiser thinks are viewing the, the content just aren't there. Um, I mean, we have a fraud lab uh, that we've had for, for some time and, and their, their entire job is to, across the digital ecosystem, now inclusive of CTV, is to identify fraud. Um, and you know, I mean, those the, the, the fraud lab that we have has, has, has spent sort of most of last year actively fighting against a number of schemes that have been created by fraudsters. Um, you know, one of the one of the main ways that they're they're actively doing uh, fraud is, is is actually replicating uh, well known sites and 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 uh, driving you mean know, traffic to those sites. Um, the, the advertiser, the consumer, you mean the consumers aren't there. The advertiser for all intents and purposes thinks they're advertising on a, a reputable site. And, and ultimately where they end up is, is, is in a fraudulent environment. Um, and I think when we look at, uh, just to finish off on this point, you know, when we look at sort of uh, 
the overall impact um, of, of of these type of uh, you mean fraudulent uh, acts, you know, through a number of technologies. The most common is something we call server side ad insertion. Um, I mean, those are are only going to increase as the volume of CTV increases, as the spend to CTV increases. You know, we captured two such schemes at the end of last year, Leo Terra and and Calorius. And you know, I mean, when we looked at those, uh, you mean know, for for our clients, by the time the 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 fraud is detected, and 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 sort of the ability for brands to spend against it is reduced. Um, I mean, the potential for, for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars had already uh, happened. So it's imperative that we, as an industry, recognize the, 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 the issue um, and uh, build towards uh, resolving it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely quite interesting to hear those stats and just how kind of sophisticated the, the fraudsters are um, for, for a relatively new medium. Um, and Jonathan, I guess Channel 4 is a bit more protected from this, you know, you're a recognised brand, you're kind of cushioned from fraudsters because you geoblock content um, and you work with partners to kind of combat it. But, um, you know, you do something more separately from these open platforms, but just from an industry perspective, is this an issue that you're seeing kind of come up um, when it comes to connected TV? Yeah, we, we talked about it earlier. I mean, it's something that we, we obviously monitor um, and we have our own sort of verification tools that we use and, 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 and we score very, very highly in terms of sort of anti-fraud and anti-bot traffic and by the very nature of, of the fact that, that all four is very much a closed platform. So there's a registration wall that sits in front of it and there's, there's obviously geo-blocking um, against all of our content because we have to do that because you know we, we either acquire or we commission content we've only got the rights to share that content within within the UK territory but look we understand that it's, 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 an, it's an ongoing issue and it's something that surfaced a few years ago um, it's something that we monitor very very closely and we're also aware that, that obviously we talk about CTV as, as, a, as a platform um, and you know the fraudsters are moving very very quickly to and as Tanzel pointed out, to, to that to that platform because it's high value, and, and we need to be forever vigilant to ensure that we're protecting ourselves against the fraudsters and against the bot traffic to ensure that we can give confidence to our advertisers um, that the money they're spending is hitting the audiences and the viewers that they want to hit. So, yeah, a really really important area. But as I say, we sort of slightly we sit in a slightly privileged position in the context of of the very nature of how how we deliver um, content to our, our, our audiences and our viewers. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely. So yeah, it's a, a huge issue, um, but yeah, I think the industry is kind of working on some solutions um, and of course, um, companies like Double Verify too. Um, I think we're kind of slightly about to run out of time here. So I'm just gonna pose a final question to you both. Um, and kind of one line, you know, this is a prediction session. What is your one hope for Connected TV in 2021? Um, Tanzel, I'm going to put you on the spot and start with you here. So I think, um, yeah, as CTV scales and it's going to scale this year, um, I, I sincerely hope that as an industry, we can come together in a, uh, in a, in a fight against uh, a lot of the concerns we've mentioned on this call uh, around transparency and measurement and fraud. So mm -hmm. even the one hope for CTV is, is, is for once, let's as an industry try to solve this problem rather than do it in piecemeal as we've done with everything else. Yeah, and there's some lessons there um, that you guys can take um, from through the years in the kind of digital industries too. Um, and Jonathan, what's your one hope for CTV this year? I thought he was going to say what's my one hope personally. My one hope personally is to go on holiday this year. Uh, but my, my one hope, um, I suppose, for, um, my, uh, look, I, I, I've talked about it earlier on. My, the key thing for us from a broadcast perspective is to deliver an all-important measurement tool um, that's fit for purpose, that, that, that cuts across both our linear and our digital platforms. And as I say, CTV is a significant proportion of our overall VOD delivery. So obviously touching onto that, um, that's the key thing for me in 2021. Great. Well, thank you both. Um, it's such an interesting topic and one that's going to be huge for advertisers over the next 12 months um, and beyond. 
but it's been lovely chatting through through it with you both um and yeah have a great rest of your day and thank you for tuning in at home um there's more predictions content over on the drum.com we don't have a crystal ball um, but we're trying our best to kind of speak to the best and brightest minds in the industry um, and talk about their predictions and thoughts for the year ahead so thanks both for joining and have a nice day thank you thank you